Hey everybody, come join us this weekend on Saturday at the Open Season Sportsman's Expo down at the Kalahari in the Dells. We will be there from 9 o'clock until 6 o'clock and we'll be in the Skag booth. Myself and Little Stinker, so come and join us. And Larry! Love it, buddy. This one's for the show. Yeah. <laughs> hey! The breathing is easy, the living is good Out in the great outdoors Larry Smith Outdoors is brought to you by Warrior Boats Vortex, Tub O' Towels, Leroy's Meats, Bart Line Barrels, Magic Products Power Sports Company, Mike's Country Meats, Baronet Blinds, Drexel Building Supply Eskimo and the MRD Group Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. Hope you guys are doing good today. Hey, I'll tell you something. We decided to jump in the truck and come on down to Illinois. Our good friend Kent Anderson, national sales representative for Warrior Boats, is fishing a tournament down here. And you know what? Anytime that I can come down and fish any river, which rivers are definitely my favorite of any body of water to fish, and I haven't been down here in about 15 years. The last time I fished the Illinois River, the sauger population was outstanding. Now, I know things have changed here. They have a lot of Asian carp in here. I have never personally seen an Asian carp. I got a funny feeling you're probably gonna see a bunch of them. But anytime I can come down and learn something from a guy like Kent Anderson, it's exciting to me. So we're gonna help him pre-fish so you guys hang on to your hiney. Hey, I'll tell you what. All right, Kent, here we go. Hey, Larry. What do you got there, buddy? Are you gonna tell me what? I'm gonna tell you what is that You've got the only minnow on, and I've got a cr two crankbaits for running. Basically working the clam beds here. Looks like a decent fish, huh? Ooh, staying down. It's one thing I love about river fishing, man. You, you never, never know. know what it's gonna be. No, you don't know what it's gonna be, and you don't know. Oh, that's a good fish right there. Take that all day long. Nice sauger. Hey, I'll tell you what, if it was tournament day, I'd like, to, one, I'd like to have about uh, five, of them. five of them. Yep. Look at the size of that fish. Let's talk a little bit about what we're doing here today. Basically, you know, we're basically pulling upstream. Yeah, we're just pulling against current, working three ways. Got live bait and a felt floater on one and then crankbaits on the other, just trying to cover some water. You know, I'm more of a jigger. I love the jig. Not that I don't mind pulling three ways and, and, and pulling cranks and pulling yep. live bait, but when the fish are this spread out, it does make a lot more sense oh, to absolutely. obviously to troll these well, fish. And, and with the dirty water, you're going to put the bait in their face longer going into it. You might be drifting down at point, point 0.9 and we're pulling up at point 0.5 to point 0.8. Okay. I just feel you're going to fold it in their face a little longer. Here's the deal. When you're vertical fishing, the river bottom's not always flat. Most of the time it's got divots in it and it's got pockets in it. And a lot of times that's where them fish are laying. Yep. Right? So if you've got a guy that's just not paying attention, he's not a good vertical fisherman. Yeah, keeping it. And here you're sauger fishing in those sauger. They're not, they're not a walleye. They like to stay, they're more of a bottom hugging. They're thing. pinned, they're and pinned you, tight. And you, can, and you can see it just on the profile of their body too. Okay. Compared to a walleye, they, they're more sleek and. Right. You know, so. Hey, one down. Let's see how many more we can catch here. You can give me the middle. Uh, you're going to give me a felt floater. I mean, that's only fair. I mean, if I'm going to give him a minnow, and I did, just so you guys know, I did pick that minnow out of my box. He's got two of his own boxes right, here. Caught six of them right. right <laughs> I don't know about that. Here we go. No, I got a fish. Man, just hanging on that nice sauger. Gotta love that. You know what? I went to nice fish right there. Same thing, boy. That fish, I just let him sit, let it sit right in the rod holder right there. And just let him hang on that before I pulled that rod out of there. 
kind of switched it up a little bit from that fat head. Nice fish right there. Well, so far, Kent, I agree 100% on pulling rigs, you know, and basically just working our way upstream on the edge of these breaks right here. I love saugers, man. It just, just the, the, the way that, look at the way their face looks all the time. Kind of look like Noah behind the camera, right? When he doesn't get anything to eat, like ticked off. Hey, hey, it is a tide so far. Hey everybody, it is our Leroy lunchtime and I can't think of a better way to end the day from a great day of fishing than having an awesome meal. Tonight we've got the prime rib burgers also, and it's both in venison. Also we have, and this is a cool thing too, you wanna to do with your venison, you can take it into Leroy's, venison meatloaf. It is delicious. Got the grill warmed up, let's get her, get her cooking. He, need, he needs a friend, he pays me, right? That's the only way, right? I mean, who else would fish with him? Would you fish with him? Yeah, in the races. I got to start the morning off the right way, buddy. Well, I got to give you a chance. Well, I appreciate you giving me a chance. Damn trolling. I know. I'd rather catch him jigging any day of the week, I'll tell you that. I like it when I start the morning off and I'm ahead of him for sure, you know? That's any chance I get, I'll take it. Ha, 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 Kent Anderson. Oh, I tell you what, you know what? You catch, get, I catch you a what. fish, you get ahead I of him. I, I tell, tell you, you what. what. I tell you when what. When you fish with Larry Smith, you better hope he has his compass holes because he makes a mess. Everywhere Are you happy? Look at that. Look at oh, here's another one. I didn't even do this one. Look at that. I cleaned that up for him. Ah, yeah. Even Jealousy. Fire. Like you were right about that, Kent. Just taking that little bit of slime off your bait right there really made a big difference. This feels like a, it's a good fish. Oh, that's a good one. There we go. <laughs> well, now he's saying he's putting me on. <laughs> on the fish, right? Jealousy all the time, folks. That's all I got to say. And you know what? Yesterday, it was tied. Today, I'm two up on them already this morning. I'm loving it. I'll take my lead any day of the week. I was a good idea. Kent started speeding up a little bit faster and he dropped the drift socks off and we're using the main motor now. A little bit better control. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. A nice fish right there. Again, you know, when it comes to fishing, the little things always make a big difference. And it could be the color of the crankbait, could be the style of the crankbait, or in this situation, it's definitely the speed because for about an hour, I was pulling the same weight, same rig, same everything. And then Kent put the drift socks down and we started to speed up and game on. That's three fish in about a half hour right there. Oh, yeah, all right, uh-huh. See what he does, huh? Got to hook him in the side, not in the mouth. That don't count. Don't count? No, I don't know. It don't count? No, don't count. Sorry. That should count as two. It's harder to get him that way. Oh, it is. What do you got going there, Kent Anderson? There you go. Hook that one. Good. Hair jig on there now, huh? Yellow? A little, little bit of love. No minnow or minnow? Minnow. Minnow, okay. A little scent. A hard pop or a soft pop? I can't tell you everything. I can't tell them all my secrets. Right. Hey, you gotta take what God gives you. That's right. Hey, you know what the best part about today is? Huh. We're in the boat. You know what the bad part of the day is? What's that? You're in my boat. <laughs> He 
you are from where you're going. <laughs> it's another fish. A white, yeah, a white bass. bass. This is like back point. at back home, folks. Negative point. No, that is not negative. Goes on the scorecard. Good one. Flavor. It's a great flavor, hey, but a little small. That one's not going to make great. Oh, it's still a number. Had a good thing going this morning and then kind of ran into a roadblock and trying to pick back up on it. that new rain gear making sure she's working, Mr. Snyder. <laughs> one more, one more. One more? Yeah, I didn't get a good yeah, didn't enough get shot. It. I didn't get one a good more, enough. He said. I didn't get a good enough shot. He <laughs> <laughs> said it wasn't raining hard enough. <coughs> That's what happens, you know. So let's talk a little bit, Kent, about, about pre-fishing. You know, I mean, and let's explain to everybody at home really, you know, the reason for pre-fishing. You got a tournament coming up next week. You don't go over a spot and just keep beating on that spot and get and pe keep beating on that spot. How often will you come back and check these spots where we did catch fish? It all depends on, like on a river system, I think it's a daily reloading thing where we're at, so it's good to stay on those fish and yep. see see what's going on and see if the different conditions. So you'll check the same spot we'll every go, day pretty well, not, much? Not every day, but we'll check it. And there's three of us that work together, myself, um, my brother Adam and Justin Schneider, and we work together awesome as a team. And you know what's nice about it is any one of those guys can go to a spot and if they don't catch them, I would have to say, yeah, they're probably not biting there. And you know, like that fish that just came off of the boat. Now, if we were netting that fish, that fish would have easily been in the boat. Right. We seen what we needed to see with that fish. We seen what he was. He's probably 15 or 16 inch, 17 inch sauger. Nice fish and that's what we need to see. One thing too about fishing a river, especially a river like the Illinois River or the Mississippi River, really these waters fluctuate like crazy. I mean, well, this water- Especially here, you know, I've never seen something that's gonna move like this thing's gonna move. Like we're supposed to get quarter inch of rain here today. I don't think we're gonna get it, but you know, up in Chicago and north of here, they're supposed to get some rain and the, the prediction, the hydrograph right now is possibilities of a two and a half foot race. Basically the last day and a half, we've been pulling rigs. Like you just had that fish on a Phelps floater. Oh, floater and a, yep, and we oh. were pulling cranks on the other ones. Why not more jigging, especially like vertical jigging? We did do that today and we caught a few fish, but mainly the, the bulk of the guys that we've been seeing have been pulling cranks. Patience, you know what, Larry, the patience. patience, I know what, I'm always trying to adjust everything, but why change when it's working? You know, it's interesting how you can run that three-way with that Phelps floater on there and run the cranks at the same speed. What do you, there you go. Nice job, Kenty. Gotta like that. Almost in the same spot, because what we did, we had hooked that one, and Kent said, let's let's drop right back and come through there one more time, because there's nobody around, and let's see if we can pick off another fish. Nice 15 inch Illinois River Sauger. The only thing that we're looking for instead of this, we want ones with big fat bellies on them. You want the big, you big. want the weight. Maybe someday I will go back to fishing tournaments, because it is a lot of fun. It is. And you know, the part that I always liked is that the guys that you're fishing with, obviously you're fishing with your brother and then you're fishing with Justin, Justin. but you spend a lot of time before the tournament, pre-planning things, in going over everything yep. in the evenings, you know, uh, it is. And you're always kind of, you know, working everything together and you can't wait till the end of the day till you get to get back to the house and start talking about a game plan. And, and breaking apart. Breaking the, them down. Uh, breaking right. down the water that you Right, that something about seeing, competition. Seeing yeah. Yeah. I'm not a very competitive person. <laughs> Hang on to your hangies. Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Well, I'll tell you what, this week's tip I have never seen before. It got really cold last night and everything is froze up. Let's go check out his, let's talk about it. Don't you carry this long do your hair every month? I do not have a hair dryer with me. All right, I have one at home, but not, at, not with me. All the zippers are froze. It was raining last night, we got below freezing. All the joys of uh, springtime fishing. 
There he goes. Hey, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. This is our third day and every day the conditions have been different. And this morning it's cold, everything is froze. Water temperatures have gone down, the water has risen. Water's on the rise, it's getting, gonna get a little muddy. So yeah, it'll be, it's been an interesting three days on the Illinois River, it's my first time here. It's been years since Larry's been here, but we've had a great time, nothing else. We've had a great time in the boat, lots of stories. So what, what's your prediction for today as far as the weather? I mean, and you, you, obviously there is a tournament going on today and there's gonna be a lot more cool weather coming in too. Well, the weather actually tomorrow is supposed to be cold again and after today and tomorrow, then we're supposed to get on a warming trend again okay. and the water level is supposed to come back down. Right. So it should be almost back to what we've seen like yesterday and the day before for water conditions. So hopefully that's where it is. I mean, fishing wasn't fantastic by any means, but we did catch a few fish. Hey, I always think myself really having these kind of conditions pre-fishing actually helps you out more than having stable conditions and all of a sudden the day before the tournament, everything changes for the worse. Here you kind of know how the fish are reacting to these different temperatures, different fluctuations in water. I mean, there's just so many different things happening here and adjusting to that, it, to me, is huge. Absolutely, I mean, there's a lot of tournaments you go to and you'll have perfect bluebird sunny skies or just fantastic weather or even crappy weather one way and then come the tournament it's completely different. It's going to give us a good opportunity to build a plan for what to expect. Well I'll tell you, I got a funny feeling it's an Asian carp and I've always wanted to catch one. Don't ask me why you guys. So do I have to get the net? Yeah you got to definitely get the net. Came all the way to the Illinois River not to catch a giant sauger, to catch one of these ugly big headed, whoa it is one! Oh it looks like a big shad! Oh my, it's a good thing he's not hooked right because I gotta let him go, otherwise I'd keep him and get him mounted. Hey, hey, hey buddy, hey buddy, hey buddy! They do stink too. Wanna smell them? No. <laughs> he didn't I'll know! Your word for it. What? Hey dude, look at his mouth. Hate to say this buddy, but I hope I never see you again! <laughs> go on back in the drink, you little stink! But I'm sitting here pumping it now. We're in some really heavy current. Anytime the water temperature, for myself, anytime it's anywhere from the 30s to 52 degrees, I like to run some scent on my baits. More times than not, especially when the water temperature is as cold as it is, as it is these fish will come up behind them baits right there and just follow them along. So having some scent on there, I always feel can't hurt you, can only help you. I'm hooked up this time on the Phelps floater in a minnow here. Again, the biggest thing is constantly pulling them lines in and cleaning all the debris because that water's coming up, pushing a lot of stuff into, into the water here. I wasn't quite sure in this kind of current if that Phelps floater with that minnow would be as productive. You got one too? Another nice fish right there. Yours Woo. a little bigger. Yeah, mine's a little bigger. But still, what a what a ball, man. I'm telling you. Let's kind of go through the specifics of a three-way rig. And then it all depends on what you're doing and different sets and whatnot, but you can run anywhere from like a three to a six foot leader on them. And then what I do that might be a little different than most people is when I'm fishing live bait like this, I'll set it up with a slider setup. Now, what's a slider setup? So what I do is I run just a regular old traditional barrel swivel, tie it on your line, then hook your leader to that. But before I tie that, I slide a regular traditional barrel swivel on the line through the eyelet. Okay. What that does is that I feel just allows that weight to slide so when that that weight stuck to the bottom and a fish bites, he can pull it back and he's not getting the weight of the, the, the feeling the weight of the weight on the top weight of, of the it. Sinker, right? Yep, yep. And then I just put a bead, and I always do that whether I'm live bait rigging or whatever, just so I don't have the weight beating on my, on my knot. I guide pretty much over 300 days a year, and the people that I bring into my boat aren't just customers and friends, they're actually family. And I always try to keep these people as comfortable as I can and safe, and I cannot think of a better product than a warrior boat. Why is their customer service so good? Because they know that you're part of their family. 
come join the warrior family. Hey Kent, I'll tell you what, what an awesome three days. You know what, I have not been back here in 15 or 20 years and the Illinois River always was a good sauger fishery. Absolutely, there's a lot of saugers in here. I don't think we even have seen close to what its full potential is. Yeah. But we definitely caught fish and had a good time. I mean, anytime we get to spend few days in the boat with you is a good time. <laughs> I appreciate that you know. for sure on that end. Hey Kent, let's talk about things that are happening at Warrior. You know, I'll tell you what, the boat market is still crazy. It is. It's been very strong. It's been just unbelievable the last few years. You know, the nice thing now is there's finally getting to be some inventory in the dealership. So, I mean, you want to buy a new Warrior, you can get out there. But I still, when you have a company that's not mass producing something, it's a semi, semi-custom boat, you just it's going to retain its value you know this year we're hoping to build that 200 mark and when there's not that many of them out there it just they hold their value and then when we build a great product and we stand behind them like we do they That's just, huge. Uh, they right just there. continue on you know and we talk about the warrior family well i feel the biggest part about the warrior family is the the warrior family reunion in august and let's this, talk a little bit about that too yeah right? th this year it's going to be august 12th it's up at lake blue woods at wigwam resort so if you own a Warrior, it doesn't matter if it's a 2023 or a 1991. Load that sucker up, bring it up to Lake Lake Woods and join in on the fun. It's the David A. Anderson Memorial Walleye Tournament and it's just a phenomenal time. It's a great experience, I can tell you that one for sure. It's one of my favorite events of the year going up there. And again, it's not, the fishing is usually pretty darn good, right? It's, because it's, it's it is about Lake as good Woods. as it can get, yes. Yeah, it is, but it's really, it's all about the experience and the people that you meet there. It's just a warm feeling. The Warrior family is no joke. It's the real deal. That and that is the truth. You have to experience it, you guys. Hey, everybody, want to thank, like we do each and every week, all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given this country and continue to give this country, along with all of our firefighters, paramedics, and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents for the great service that they give us. What a great day it is to be alive. The best part about this is I'm going to see you guys again next week, and thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a nice one. Hey, how's it going today? Good. Except for I got a fish with Kent. I wish I had a paintball gun right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd shoot you with a paintball gun. I didn't even get you. Larry, I gotta find new friends. The only thing that we're looking Missouri? for. Missouri? I thought this was Illinois River. Illinois River. <laughs>